Welcome to another day in the Matrix. This is Waters Above. We have so much to get into in today's video since the new FedNow service just went live less than 24 hours ago. And I'm sure many of you remember in the beginning of this month on July 1st, I released the FedNow Decoded, which was to prepare those who were following along with the Federal Reserve's moves leading into this launch of the FedNow service what to expect after it launches, and my speculation around how this would affect the crypto market, and breaking down my theory around FedCoin. And here we are, Fed now is officially live. So I went ahead and just released a follow-up to that presentation titled August Blue Moon Decoded, which dives deeper into the month of August and what we can expect for these markets, especially with this rare occasion of having two full super moons in the same month, making it a blue moon. And I expose why that's important. And I even get into the upcoming 15th annual BRICS Summit. And I'm actually planning to come out with a dedicated BRICS decode next month. But for now, the August Blue Moon Decoded is available on Patreon at patreon.com slash waters above. The link can be found in the description or in the pinned comment of today's video. And I've already received incredible feedback on this new decode, so I'm really grateful for all the support, family. And it's been beautiful to watch our community collaborate further after these decodes release. We really have some of the most brilliant minds in the decoding and technical analysis space. It's really amazing what we're doing over here. So shout out to all of you who support this art. And more importantly, shout out to those who are here to collaborate together in this expansion. We appreciate you. So let's just get straight into today's video. We had this official update from the Federal Reserve yesterday. So the Federal Reserve has officially announced that their new FedNow service is live on July 20th, which I kind of want to get into the code immediately, start breaking this down piece by piece. July 20th is the 201st day of this year. And again, this 201 code is very special. Some of you may be aware of Event 201, a predictive programming tabletop exercise of what would happen if the world experienced a global pandemic. And that's exactly what went down four months later. And if you take from this date of FedNow launching on July 20th, and you bring that over to the anniversary of the Federal Reserve System, which is on the 12th month, December 23rd. And you come up with instantly a very important code, but I want to talk about this date of December 23rd really quickly. I'm just going to pop over here to show you the formation date when it was established December 23rd of 1913, one year after the sinking of the Titanic. I spoke about this in my last video as well. And I just wanted to point out that December 23rd is in fact the last day of Saturnalia, the Saturnalia festival. So please keep that in mind as part of today's decode. But connecting from when FedNow launched to the next anniversary of the Federal Reserve System gives you 22 weeks in two days, the 222 code. It's an angel number. And tie this concept all together, the date of event 201, which was October 18th of 2019. And you're going to see that this date was a 22 standard date numerology, 22 being the master number, master builder, master destroyer. And we're going to get into the Gamatra really quickly and see that event 201 gives you 222 in full reduction. So this is all tied together and it's going to get crazy how this is all part of my thesis of what's going down right now with the launch of this FedNow service at this exact time. Another term that we have is World Economic Forum being the 222 in English ordinal. It's very important. One of the most important things that I wanted to talk about in today's video was how the World Economic For Forum was formed in January 1971, 52 years ago. And just like how today we're in the Chinese lunar year of the rabbit, and I'm going to be tying this all together by the code rabbit giving you 52. And we're in that year right now, which just so happens to be the year of Jubilee. And we're specifically talking about cryptocurrency which gives you 52. These 52s are crucial. 
So 52 years ago in 1971 was also the Nixon shock. So this is all tied together, making this particular year of 2023 crucial because, again, it's the year of the Jubilee. So getting back to Event 201, the date that Event 201 happened on, being October 18th of 2019, this happened about four months before March of 2020, which was the C-19 global pandemic, again tied to the World Health Organization, which is another one of those globalist you know, protocols that's all in bed together with the World Economic Forum, with the Federal Reserve System, International Revenue Service, etc. They are not anything separate. They are all one. It's a globalist agenda. And this launch of FedNow, perhaps, could this be the same style of predictive programming that we got, like with Event 201, where the Event 201 tabletop exercise was four months before it became reality. So I'm playing around with this idea with the launch of this new FedNow service on July 20th, just yesterday of this year, and kind of making a similar connection to see the amount of dates, uh, the amount of days away, excuse me. And if we were to copy the same amount of days between Event 201 and C-19, it was around 145 days. And if we were to match that now, it would be December 12th. Now, this is incredible how it lands right in that December month leading into the next Federal Reserve birthday, essentially. And would you look at that? December 12th also has a 67 and 20 and well, it has a 67 date numerology, just like the first day of Rosh Hashanah this year. You could see that 67 right there. And also it was the day that we were tying back to event 201. And this started to blow my mind how this 67 keeps popping up over and over again. And I'm going to tie this all in for you guys in a moment. So... Considering that the first day of Rosh Hashanah this year, which will be leading into the end of Jubilee, has the 67 date numerology, the date that we're connecting to all of this through this concept of Event 201 tied to the launch of what eventually became reality, also having the 67 date numerology, and this connection giving us to this day of December 12th another 67 date numerology, this putting us into, ironically, the day that leaves 19 days left in the year. And we just spoke about C-19. Now, that number 19 is important because it is A and I, artificial intelligence. A is your first letter, and I is your ninth in the alphabet. And some of you might be asking, well, why is the number 67 important? Well, 67 is important because it is the 19th prime number, again, tying you back to A-I artificial intelligence so if anyone watched my fed now decoded which was just released some weeks back in preparation for the launch of this new fed now service you know in my podcasts i made surrounding the release of that decode i told everyone to not get their hopes up about xrp being extremely bullish on the launch of that fed now service um I said it in the Fed now decoded that this new service will not use XRP or the XRP ledger or any of Ripple's products, and it will also not use Stellar Lumens, XLM, or IOTA or any of the other ISO compliant token blockchains. And here we are today, you'd see XRP just got rejected off that 85 cent level uh, three days, through three days in a row pretty much, and there's clearly profit taking into this 80 cent range. And I told everyone to expect that months ago when I revealed my 83 to 91 cent target as my personal de-risking level. And as a reminder that I do have profit taking levels above one dollar. Anyone who's been following along here knows that I've said I would not be surprised if I saw XRP swipe into a dollar, even a dollar thirty. But I am not entertaining any new all time highs at this time. And I'm bringing this up now early in this video because we're hearing a lot of speculation about how this lawsuit ended at this perfect time in preparation for this launch and how on the day of launch we were supposed to just watch XRP moon and there's so many of these theories and here on this channel you're gonna get the grounded truth you know we're gonna take the emotions out of it we're looking at this like decoders we're looking at this like sophisticated technical analysts and we're aware that if it sounds too good to be true then it probably is and that was the purpose of kind of giving out those decodes um, and being you know very direct and not holding back my opinion on how this would all go down and I could see that you know we're here again 
And now that FedNow is launched, we're getting rejected and people want to know, like, what's up? You know, what's up? So you're in the right place because we're looking at this from all angles. You can just tell by the way we're applying past events to what could happen in the future that we have dialed in a system here. This is what we were able to do with what happened with the Titan submersible ritual. It's what we were able to do with the past two Super Bowls. I mean, what just happened with the NBA Finals. This is all code playing itself out, you know, and if you are unaware of this, well, welcome. You know, this is a great place to get started and build this foundation of truth that'll make your investment thesis much, much more developed. And it'll make you less emotional when these things happen. And that's ultimately what is most important here is the mindset. You know, it's the mindset that makes you a profitable long term investor. So <clears throat> getting back to all of this, I, I just want everyone to take a moment to realize that in the long run, I don't think you actually want XRP to be shooting up into a new all time high right now. Uh, because if it was to do that, it would have no structure between a dollar sixty and three dollars. So if we were to theoretically shoot straight up to four dollars, five dollars, eight dollars, or, or even higher right now, I really don't think you see the consequences of this. And it's why when XRP tends to pump, it just dumps right back down. It creates these bart heads. So I'm going to break this down a little bit for people, and I think it's going to help. If we were to theoretically break up into these higher highs, price discovery, I just want you to consider some of these thoughts. It'll be helpful for you. Again, I know it might be challenging for some people because this is what everyone wants. Everyone wants to just see the case is over. Well, the case isn't actually over, but we've gotten some regulatory clarity on XRP itself, not necessarily on the future of Ripple and what's going on. I mean, there's plenty of other information that's been left out by a lot of these so-called XRP influencers. But getting to the truth of all of this and kind of the psychological experiment, let's just kind of entertain. If we went past a dollar and we went just straight up to $10, and then we were to crash right back down into a dollar again because there's been nothing traded between the levels of a dollar 60 up through a dollar 33 pretty much thin air there's thin air below us and it could easily come crashing right back down to one dollar just as fast as it went up now is that what you really want or would it be more ideal for XRP to build some support into the mid 70 cent range so that it never breaks below 50 cents again? Or better yet, let's fill out the $1 range for some time so that it at least holds the dollar for more than just a couple weeks, which it tends to not. See, I think very few people look at it this way. And that shows they aren't actually in this for the long game. They just want some arbitrary pump to some arbitrary price target. And that, to be honest with you, even if that pump up to $4 or $8 happened, I bet that same person with the same mindset would still not take action on that move because they'd be waiting for even higher. And the greed just rips that person apart. It's a never-ending cycle of greed, and it's essentially a form of hypnosis. So trust me, family, if anybody wants to see a $10 or $20 XRP, it's me. I've been investing in this project since it was 18 cents. And although I took action and de-risked and took some profits when needed, I still have a long-term thesis that XRP is going into double digits, potentially next year. I'm being extremely transparent about this, exposing everything I'm personally doing and sharing the technical analysis and decoding strategies to reveal how I developed this investment thesis. It's not just numbers that are pulled out of thin air. And that's what's most important about all of this is how you can take this system and utilize it. And you could utilize it on any project you're in interested in, whether it's XRP or even Apple stock. It's holistic in that fashion. So getting back to the Fed, we know we have this upcoming FOMC meeting on the 25th and 26th. We're heading up into the weekend as I film this, so crypto will be trading alone over the next couple days. And I definitely expect this upcoming Monday of the 24th, being July 24th, definitely going to have noticeable volatility, uh, especially for the traditional markets, because we'll be leading into the FOMC meeting the following day. And... We'll finish off today's decode coming back to that critical number 52 that I mentioned earlier since it's been 52 years since the World Economic Forum 
formed. And we're in the year of the rabbit, like I mentioned, rabbit being 52. You just saw on the screen moments ago, cryptocurrency equals 52 right here in Chaldean cipher. And this makes pretty much all of next week tie back to this code. So I just want to show you how Monday, July 24th is the 205th day of the year. That again, you remove the zero with the rules of numerology. That's bringing you back to 25. We get 25 in the word crypto right here in the same cipher, Chaldean. As above, so below. Everything is mirrored. Nothing is mimicked. So this makes this Tuesday, which is also called the 25th, but outside of that, from the 25th tied to the 28th, just next week, is going to be all 52s. The reason why for those three days of the 25th, 26th, 27th, and then ultimately the 28th, um, about three to four days technically, it's because there's three days of Rosh Hashanah. So on the 25th, we'll be connected to September 16th by 52 days. On the 27th, we'll be connected to the last day of Rosh Hashanah by 52 days. This will be effectively moving you into the new Hebrew year. Now, September 18th being into the official first day after Jubilee, and that happened to land on a 25 date numerology. <laughs> So this would just be connected again to your 28th or the last day of the week, making pretty much the entire trading week of next week very, very important. <clears throat> I also believe that it will be the 30th week of the year. Yes, it will. So that alone being the 30, that brings you back to three. And I have a big 33 connection to wrap up this. But we want to watch out specifically for July 25th, okay? This is very, very important. That day being the date of the FOMC me meeting and this gem that I found connecting to the last solar eclipse that we had being on the 20th of April. It's connected by 96 days. So just a couple of um, you know reminders. Bitcoin's all-time high is 69,000. The queen died during her platinum jubilee at 96 years old. Silicon Valley Bank failed on March 10th, which is the 69th day of the year. I mean, it could keep going on. It's been amazing how many 6996 connections there's been specifically this year. And that connects to the second day of this upcoming um, meeting, uh, specifically to the 25th by 96 days. But I just think that's an incredible, you know, concept here, how this is all tied together with this code, with this 9669 code. And one moment, let me just make the final connection because I think this is pretty fascinating. If we connect the second day of this upcoming FOMC meeting <clears throat> to, I believe it is Rosh Hashanah, last Rosh Hashanah, which is the 26th of September of 2022, this is the start of Jubilee. This is the beginning of it. So the he when the Hebrew calendar started this year, effectively, and remember all those nine sixes and 69s I was bringing up before? Well, the first day, uh, well, essentially Rosh Hashanah in the beginning of Jubilee starts on the day leaving 96 days left in the year. And if you connect this to the last day of the upcoming FOMC meeting, it's 303 days apart, the 33 the master number of transmutation. So if you want to know why they selected these dates in advance, these FOMC meetings and all these critical dates that they do, if you want to know the truth, it has everything to do with the Hebrew calendar because that's who's running the Federal Reserve System. It's who's been running it since its inception 109 years ago. If you know, you know. But this 303 connection in the 30th week of this year all coming back to this critical number three. Remember, they do everything in threes. You probably heard that saying before. I would not sleep on this information, family. This is very important. So I'm going to be going over into the technical analysis now so that we can analyze the charts and just get a feel for what's been happening lately. So before we get into the TA, go ahead and give this video a like if you haven't already, and then spread some love in the comment section. That's what we're all about here. So now we're looking at Bitcoin. Just going to be doing a quick overview on Bitcoin, Ethereum, and then wrap it up with good old XRP. One second, though. <clears throat> All right. Needed to take a sip of water. These are always one take videos, no editing, on the fly, freestyled. So 
we have a couple things to get into, but I just want to show you a couple of basics. We have this trend line. I'm going to go on the daily chart. Critical support trend line that's been in play now for going on 200 days. Effect. Oh, that's really funny. It's pretty much been in play for 202 days or around 201 days. And we were just talking about 201 in the beginning of today's decode. How the day that Fed now launched was the 201st day of this year. And that makes so much sense because this trend line pretty much started forming right there in the beginning of the year, of course. So, Anywho, we have this critical support line. So if Bitcoin does want to roll over a little bit more, I think this is going to be the trend line to catch. And it would make a little bit of sense because right here we have a W, which is not a textbook W. This W pattern we're seeing is sort of invalidated because the second V of the pattern is a lower low. Typically, a bullish W has a high sorry, lower high followed by uh, a higher low. And this uh, structure gives us a feeling that we're maintaining an uptrend, you know? So we don't get bullish Ws too often in Bitcoin uh, the way they should look. This is an example of one where you see your low and then here on the second V, you have a higher low, but we never back tested the neckline. So it's very critical. Um, this could be a fake out if we are to have a correction. It could be a fake out back test on the neckline of this W pattern, which would be a more healthy play. Uh, just breaking straight through it and continuing is what Bitcoin likes to do. That's why when you use these traditional forms of TA that you would apply to something like Forex or stock indices, Bitcoin doesn't usually do those things. So you have to be open minded, you know. Of course, it's a tool in your toolbox, but don't be too reliant on that tool is what I'm trying to say. So I really like this critical support trend line. I'm going to go ahead and pull up a couple of my moving averages to see if anything sticks out to me. OK, so all of our EMAs are curving to the downside. That's not good for right now. And OK, we're still in a good posture with these uh, more critical EMAs. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the drawing. So we're just looking at the moving averages right now. We could see the 200 exponential, 200 simple sloping to the upside, looking very nice, holding as a support on every pullback we've had since this breakout. Um, these are coming into uh, what would be around the 26,000 level, which would effectively be higher than the local low that we would need to cross below in order to break structure. So far, we're in a bull structure. We even made a higher high compared to back here, a bull structure. We had our wolf cross. It's still maintaining with the eight above the 55. I don't want to see this eight cross below the 55 right now. I would like Bitcoin to just have one more last push to the upside, get into slightly overbought on the RSI, and then we could have a little bit of a correction to kind of just balance things out right now. Uh, I think the stock market needs to do the, what I just said, like right now <laughs> the stock market is insanely overvalued um, it's been one of the most epic relief rally automatic rally examples i've ever seen and i've been studying these charts now pretty much five ten hours a day going back the last three years this iteration of what we just had is classic jubilee vibes and you get anomalies during those years of course because we only get one every 50 years so just be open-minded to that family. This has been incredible how we've also been able to be so accurate this year out of all years when it is such an unpredictable year. So just getting back to what I'm seeing right now, if we are to get a little bit of a back uh, test at lower at, at a lower um, leg down, it would make sense on the 55 simple. Until this 8 crosses below the 55 simple, I would not entertain a test of the 200. So I'm more feeling good about what's happening right now than starting to get worried. But if we were to zoom in and just really look at what's been happening lately since Bitcoin made this move up into April and then this short term test to the top, it does look distributional. It does look like an like a UTAD in Wyckoff method. I don't have the time to get into that in today's video. Again, I have my crypto mastermind course where I teach all of this and for any Patreon supporters of mine, you get a 20% off discount of all of my courses. So, you know, just by joining like an annual membership, you're already saving two months there. And if you wanted the course, you're pretty much using that discount to apply it to the course and you already get a discount on top of that. So, you know, there's really a lot of wisdom in that, including the exit strategy blueprint. If you want to know more about some of the nuances of what I'm teaching here, but needless to say, um, if I was to use a shorter term Wyckoff schematic, this does look sort of distributional and that's what's worrying regardless of the higher low structure. That's what I'm saying. I wouldn't be surprised if we just had one more fake out to the upside for Bitcoin. Um, so we've covered the lower targets. I think those were important to get out of the way first because 
we're still looking at the same upside targets. We have the 0.5 FIB sitting around 32,600. We have filling that CME gap around, what is it, 35,200 on the CME chart. We've yet to accomplish that. And then getting into the bottom of the golden pocket is typically how we end a relief rally. So getting Bitcoin into 37, 39, maybe 40 and rolling over would make a lot of sense right now. And if you guys remember some of the last video that, videos that I put out, I talked about how off of testing the last days on this uh, back test of the support up to hitting highs, it's about 40, 43 days in this iteration. We got about like 35 days if we wanted to count this extreme. Uh, and then taking that average and bringing us over about 35 days, we're past that now. We're pretty much right there. And bringing it to like the mid 40 day time frame is right there in your monthly close. So. That would be typical to anticipate Bitcoin to just get through this moment. It's just super in alignment with the next FOMC meeting. So is that what it's going to take for Bitcoin to move move up, you know, to get into that FOMC meeting, uh, you know, essence, that vibe? I wouldn't be surprised at this time because this market is completely just like a big, you know, a big yo-yo. But we're looking at Ethereum right now and I am not really feeling so good about further continuation for ETH because it still has yet to make a higher high from the April 18, April 16th highs, whilst Bitcoin has. So, yeah, I mean, what I would really like to see is just holding two-day, three-day, maybe a five-day candle close above 2080. And then I would feel confident that we could have one more leg up. But for now, this is really just chopping sideways. I mean, if we're going to analyze this horizontal trading range, it's been going on for 120 days. Um, we Something's got to give. This has to pop soon. And if it breaks beneath this critical support trend line, I do believe it'll be caught on the 200s, daily 200 exponential or daily 200 simple moving average, which is what Bitcoin tends to do as well. So it's just going to follow Bitcoin as long as Bitcoin's dominance hovers around this like 50% level that it's at right now. So upside targets, I mean, I'm still entertaining that there's a possibility that if Bitcoin breaks into 35, maybe 37, 38K, that we could see a $2,300 ETH. Um, not much higher than that, though. It looks pretty gassed out. On the downside, you have those 200s. Anything starting to close below the 382 would look ugly, but we have to hold structure regardless. So no doom and gloom until we're actually breaking structure beneath 1648 or so. Let's get over to XRP and wow. Okay, XRP has had, you know, a too quick, too soon breakout. We all knew this um, regardless of whatever narratives they gave us. I mean, here we are. We talked about a lot of the you know theory of what's to expect with xrp in the last video so if you're new here please go check that out if you haven't already that video is killing it like it almost made it to 40,000 views so that really resonated with people it's getting a lot of outreach and i appreciate anyone who's gone ahead and shared it since the breakout but what we're facing with right now looks like a potential w in play and i like how we're holding this eight simple even though we don't have much data since this breakout it's been a parabolic straight line breakout um, i would like to see us continue to hold the 0.5 fib which is around 75 cents if we started to close um beneath this level right here 71 cents on a daily that would really trigger i think a push down into the 60 cent range but at this time, because we moved up too fast too soon, I'm entertaining that we could have a couple more days of dealing with this and then probably into next week again, see how this energy comes in for XRP. Because I brought up earlier in today's video, we have a clean sell wall at 83 cents. Uh, 80, 83 seems to be like a struggle level for XRP. It can't last up much higher than that for too much long uh, without getting these pretty nasty rejections. So what would be what would facilitate xrp to continue well we have this daily close 82 cent level that's kind of getting in the way and then we have to make it up into this golden pocket somewhere around 93 94 cents and if you were to look at this fib pull the way that i have it set up it's from the high of april 2021 down to the swing low of june 2022 and we came up perfectly smacked at the bottom of the golden uh, pocket right there um, and I'm still entertaining a dollar XRP in this current move. We just went a little too hard too soon. We needed to have a little bit of a pullback. All of the exchanges that were having liquidity issues on the day of this breakout are now back to normal. Um, and for anyone who copied, you know, the de-risking levels, not that I tell people to, but, you know, you were able to nibble a little bit yesterday. 
and the day before. And these are good looking levels. So I just want people to withhold from greed right now. That's really it. That was really the purpose of my, um, you know, talk earlier regarding Fed now being launched and everything people were anticipating for XRP. Um, it's very grounded stuff, guys. Like we're not trying to be anti anything. We're not trying to shut down people's theories. We're open to it all. But, you know, you got to exercise discernment right now. And there's too much of this too good to be true energy circling uh, around the XRP community. And in order to really grow here, you know, you kind of ha have to take the tribalism out of it and you have to see clearly, have clarity. And that's what's going to allow you to execute and take action and ultimately become profitable in this market. So we have a uh, opportunity to make it up until like a dollar 33, I think. Um, I'm more settled in like the dollar three level, the dollar, you know, 20 level. I like that because of the 702 fib. But entertaining any new all time highs right now is not in my analysis. I do not feel that going on. Um, if we are, though, to break a dollar 60 on a weekly close, that would be very telling that there's a potential for us to. Um, enter what is called an SOS in Wyckoff method and a very macro SOS being your buying climax, selling climax, automatic rally, and the potential SOS if we could start breaking macro candle closures above 160. So as I said before, um, oh my God, like seven months ago, I said no parties on XRP until we break 54 cents. That was a gorgeous call because we tapped 54 cents many, many times before coming back down and then finally having our blast up to my next level, which was 83 cents to 91 cents. Perfectly accomplished. Now, my next level is saying, well, if we start to break above my 133 target as my final highs, well, no parties until 160 then because we can absolutely get up to 160, get rejected and then come back down. And that would just be, you know, an extension, a little bit more exuberant uh, uh, move, sort of like what the NASDAQ is doing. So just look right here, family, and then I should wrap up this video. We have this 888 sitting at $1.58, that 888 fib, compare it to what we saw with the NASDAQ. And look at this. We saw perfectly a test of this 888 fib on the NASDAQ chart. Boom. Perfect touch rejection. This is a phenomenal rally for the NASDAQ. If we were to see that happen in XRP and it could actually extend all the way up to $1.60, that would be very surprising. If it starts closing above that, that would be even more surprising because we need this money to come from somewhere. It's clearly not coming from retail. Here we are. It's been at least, you know, going on a week now since all of this news and all of the exuberance and it's at 70 something cents. You know, we're looking at 78 cents. So I just want you guys to be, you know, really, this is the time to not go against your trading plan. Don't let me influence your trading plan. You must design your trading plan around your personal finances. It's very important. I'm just here revealing what I'm doing, sharing, being transparent. And it's been a beautiful ride. I'm really enjoying, you know, everything that we've been doing together to collaborate on this. And I can't wait. So really, I mean, I can't wait till next year. I think we are getting so dialed in in this process that by next year, we're going to be best of the best. And I don't say that lightly. So I'm looking forward to the next Red Pill podcast that I'll be doing this Sunday that is included in the Patreon membership. Like I said to you guys earlier, I do have this new August Blue Moon Decoded available now at Patreon, all part of the membership. And really packed with gems. So it's one of those that you're probably going to need to watch it more than once. And also looking forward to tomorrow's live stream. <clears throat> I appreciate every single one of you. I'm going to wrap up this video now. Going to be spicy on tomorrow's live. Appreciate every single one of you. Much love.